Hi, um, thank you for tuning in to watch this um, applicant video from the School of English here at the University of Kent. Uh, my name is Juha Vertanen, and in addition to being a senior lecturer at the School of English, I am also the school's director of recruitment and uh, admissions. What that basically means is, is that if you have applied to any of the programs owned by the School of English at Kent, at one point during the process of us reviewing your application, it would have landed on my desk. And it's been really, really fantastic engaging with all of your excellent personal statements during this application cycle. I've really, really enjoyed it. Um, myself and my colleagues wanted to reach out to you with this video at this very, very strange time in all our lives with the ongoing coronavirus situation and hopefully be able to, through the medium of this video, give you a sense of what it might feel like to be a student here at the School of English at the University of Kent. Um, what will follow during the course of this video is a series of introductory uh, clips and statements both from my colleagues and some of our current students that will give you an indication of both our academic community, of which you as a student here would be an active member. Uh, we'll also be talking about our school's research culture and how that research culture feeds in to your seminar teaching. We'll also be kind of covering short segments on additional benefits of your degree at Kent, particularly in line with opportunities uh, through our employability scheme, as well as uh, additional um, features such as a year abroad between your second and the third year of your undergraduate studies. Finally, to close this particular video, to give you a kind of a whirlwind tour of what your degree program might look like, um, there will be a series of short introductions to modules across all of the three different year levels of our undergraduate degree. So that will be the kind of structure for this video overall, and I hope that you enjoy watching it. The university facilitates my interest in various ways. For example, they run keynote lectures and research seminars, and these events are led by world-renowned experts, and they provide a fantastic wealth of information and education that I find particularly useful. I try my best to go to as many of these as I can. And, for example, one event I found particularly interesting was about Derek Jarman and his life in Dungeness. Now my daily schedule involves a lot of reading and I generally do this in the English undergrad common room as only we get to use it, which means it's quieter and also more targeted for us. I regularly have strange conversations about different subjects and the odd things that I've come across in my research with my friends and other students who are in the room. This year I took over running uh, a society called Paper Stage which uh, is an early modern drama reading society. So um, we take um, early modern plays and we kind of uh, sometimes we read them out and sometimes uh, I give little um, lectures on, on uh, parts of these, of these plays and we do kind of a trial run seminar um, for predominantly second year students. So the students the year below me, but um, it depends, you can kind of do it uh, we kind of we run, I run it in whatever way the people who, who run it with me uh, feel would be most useful. There's all sorts of extracurricular stuff that you can get involved in, uh, including our weekly reading series where we invite um, guest speakers. It could be anybody from a debut writer through to a really established big name novelist or poet. Um, there's also a series of talks from professionals working in the books and media industries. I work very closely with Faith Phoenix, who's the office manager from professional services in the school. And together we organise a series of student voice forums, one happening every term. These forums are designed to facilitate discussion between professional services, academics and students in the school. They're informal spaces and they really operate as spaces where students can come to discuss issues that they are interested in discussing or to listen to other students or to develop plans, ideas for events that they would like to see happening. I can definitely see a massive difference between 
my academic self now and what I was in school. Um, and this is because the degree at Kent has a massive focus on transitioning you from school writing to university writing. Um, it definitely made me into a more critical and argumentative writer, um, which is really good in the skills that you're supposed to gain from an English literature degree. Um, it makes you consider your argument more carefully and pursue your interests and pursue an argument so well. Um, I think at A-level you were kind of given certain expectations to meet um, certain criteria and get the best grades and at university you're very much pushed away from this mode of thinking and encouraged to follow your own specific ideas. Canterbury as a town is just wonderful. Um, I find for me it fits because it's not crazy and manic but there's also a lot of stuff going on like live music events, comedies, lots of pubs, restaurants, just some really lovely things to do. You'll never be bored, there's always something going on. So what is research-led teaching? It's when a module or a course offering uh, is tailored to the specific research interests of the instructor. So if someone in the School of English is working on a new research project, they might offer a module that aligns with that project's activities and outputs, engaging with students in the classroom and beyond about their specialised subject helps to produce mutually informing teaching and research. Each improves the other. It's one of many examples of us coming together, as I say, as an, a strong academic community. It's enabling us to develop skills that are clearly transferable, but that, that are very attractive to employers, that are very useful to us in, 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 in other spheres of, of, of life outside of the classroom. So we want you to be ambitious. We want you to be original and bold and inventive and brave. And those are things that we strive for in our own artistic practice. All of the teachers at Kent are practicing published writers of poetry, fiction or nonfiction. We're involved in all kinds of other professional activities as well, like publishing small presses, magazines and journals, um, journalism, book reviews, running events and festivals in Canterbury and London and elsewhere. The Literature Seminar is a place for you to lead your own learning. The seminar is not like an ordinary classroom. There's nothing delivered to you, there's no instruction. Rather, you go away and you do your own preparation based on your own reading and your own research and you bring that into the seminar. And then when the readings are brought out for you and your classmates to compare, you come up with your own ideas and arguments. And the seminar leader's job is not to tell you what's right and wrong, not even really uh, to guide you along one particular path, but just to help you and your classmates discover what's in each other's minds and what's lying in the text that you can dig out of it. Which I think is really cool because it gives you a chance to actually really explore your ideas and it's in a really safe and friendly environment where you can bounce off each other and have some really good conversations actually. The main way that we teach creative writing is through the workshop. So in a writing workshop you share your work in advance of class um, and your fellow classmates read the work, uh, think about it and offer you some comments and we have a discussion in class. It's really central to our approach to teaching and it's a fantastic way to improve your writing but it also offers you all kinds of other vital skills like editing your own and others work, how to give and, and receive criticism, um, understanding audiences and collaboration. It's a really interesting way of working because it's so different from anything you'll have done before. Um, it's really kind of a really good feedback um, session uh, between you and uh, the other people that you're, that you're talking to. Um, so whilst it can be a little bit scary to start off with, it's actually, I would say, the, the best way to um, talk about your work with other people. And talking about your work with other people is key. Now, the traditional seminar is really rooted in the text and in textual interpretation. And you'll still get to do a lot of that at Kent if you come and study literature with us. But in the 21st century, the literature seminar is also changing. You might find yourself analysing social media data to see how literary texts proliferate in the world of today. 
You might find yourself writing a computer program to analyze the language of a novel or to generate some new poetry. You might find yourself collaborating on a wiki or leading a webinar with students from China or in other countries. There's a great deal of transformation happening in the economy and in society, and that digital transformation is happening in English as well. And you, as the next generation of students, will get to lead that transformation and make it happen. As well as being a lecturer in contemporary literature, I'm also the School of English Employability Officer. This means that I'm responsible for helping students think about where they'd like to be after their degree. And I do this in a range of ways. Firstly, I hold office hours every week where students can book an appointment and come and talk to me about anything related to careers. That might just be, I don't know what I want to do next, or I've got a specific goal, but I just need some help in, in achieving it. Secondly, I run a range of workshops, everything from how to write a CV, how to apply for an internship, or how to get onto a graduate scheme. Thirdly, we run a range of events where we invite industry professionals to talk to students about how to make it into careers such as publishing, editing, marketing, social media. Finally, we have a range of work experience opportunities, including the School of English Ambassador Scheme. This allows students to go into secondary schools and support English related projects gaining work experience alongside their degree. All of these things are designed to help you and support you in thinking about where you'd like to be in the future and how to get there. So I'm a professor of 18th century studies at, at Kent and one of the things that I have been working on for a number of years is uh, the first modern women's magazine if you will, it's called The Ladies Magazine. And it's a wonderfully eclectic, influential, important publication about which not much has been really known until recently. And to cut a long story short, not that long ago, I happened to discover a bunch of materials from that magazine that we thought were previously lost in the form of these embroidery patterns, which were usually ripped out of and uh, from individual copies of the magazine and used and therefore didn't survive but I happened to come across a big tranche of them I was very happy to do so and wanted to share my discovery in ways that would make the patterns available and usable to uh, people interested in the history of dress and, and fashion and costume designers and people interested in, in women's history and needlework more broadly. So what I did was as part of our summer internship program I announced that I had this archive of material I'd really value students contribution to working with me on that material to provide a kind of database of what we'd found with a view to making it accessible to the wider public and it was an extraordinary experience the students I had way more many more volunteers than I could ever have dreamed of came together brought the experience that they had outside the classroom whether it was in the world of tech and computing or web design um, some had very specialist knowledges from other subjects they'd done at A-level or as part of a joint honours degree in subjects like art history, for instance, or cultural or social history. And we pulled together our collective knowledge, along with my own experience as, a, as, a, as an 18th centuryist, as a digital humanist, to bring all this together to work on cataloguing this material, providing rich metadata for it, and we now have a working database ready to go live at some point in the very near future where we can share that research expertise. So I went to the University of Copenhagen and it was the most beautiful, incredible place that I've ever been. I'm, so I guess one of the main questions is why do a year abroad? And I would say it gives you the most incredible experiences that you wouldn't have in any other environment or situation. I met the most incredible people that I'm so thankful to have met. Um, I experienced the learning in a whole new academic environment and I learned a whole new culture and also how to live away from home and completely away from home in a whole other country which was a big step for me but I am so thankful and grateful that I did it. 
taking English at Kent means that you'll be able to pursue a personal degree that you'll be able to shape according to your own interest and enthusiasms. Throughout your undergraduate uh, program, you will only have between two to three compulsory modules, with the rest of them being up to your own choice. As such, it's quite difficult in the, the, the capacity of this video to give you an exact kind of pathway as to what your studies might look like in terms of the particular modules and courses you will take. Because, ultimately, that shape of those studies will be up to the decisions you make throughout your uh, degree program. However, um, what will follow in the next few sections is an indication of different module options uh, that you will be able to kind of find in each stage during your undergraduate degree. We will be proceeding in line from the first year to the third year and hopefully you'll kind of get a sense of the sort of modules that could await you as a student here. This module gives you a grounding in the literary canon and we look at texts by Shakespeare, Virginia Woolf and Jane Austen but it also shows you how literature has changed and developed across time, right up to the contemporary. And we look at authors who are writing today, such as Terence Hayes, Lydia Davis, and Kate Tempest. As well as looking at poetry, drama, and prose, we'll also think about contemporary forms, such as zines, digital literatures, and even how social media use stories. We look at a range of different theories that are relevant to and useful for the study of literature. Uh, so we look at things like psychoanalysis, we look at things like Marxist theory, we look at things like post-colonial theory and critical race theory, we look at feminism and we look at queer theory and also uh, disability studies. And the module's aim is to make these theories accessible and uh, understandable. We break them down into manageable pieces and we think about how they relate to the wider world. On this module you'll be focusing on a range of creative writing techniques, keeping a journal, workshopping your creative work with peers and your seminar leader, and editing and redrafting your work. You'll look at a range of material on this module, analysing how that material uh, is edited and shaped into creative output. You'll be looking across genre, looking at methodologies used as well as constraints that you may place upon your work to encourage new ways of working and ways to usher in new vocabularies. Well, before the Romantic era, writers such as Daniel Defoe, the author of Robinson Crusoe, talked of the horror and the ugliness and the, and quote, the unhospitable terror of places like this in the Lake District. A hundred years later, and the reputation of the region had been completely transformed into a place of beauty and of contemplation. So in Romantic Ecologies, we'll look at what happened to the natural world in the century between Defoe and the Romantic poets, especially figures like uh, Wordsworth and uh, Shelley and Charlotte Smith. And how the debates produced during this period are ones that we're still struggling to make sense of uh, and to understand the impact of today. This is a module that's sort of founded on the understanding that through engaging with narratives of dystopian fiction or science fiction or other kinds of speculative realities, we can gain some clarity uh, of the pressing issues that we face in our real world today. The module is structured through uh, according to five thematically linked units and over the course of a term we'll consider how these narratives that exist in other worlds can give us um, tools that can help us develop nuanced analyses of complex questions involving the present crises we face on the environmental level, political uh, or historical or social level. This module gives you the chance to study the literary history of America in the 20th century by looking at the way it represents two of its great cities, Los Angeles and New York. The overarching theme of this module is really to look at how America becomes modern and the way that writers represent that modernity. It's a period of great uncertainties. It's a period during which the world is broken and this brokenness 
is really reflected in the experimental literature of the time, an experimental literature that at times seems broken, seems to be uh, reflecting upon itself. Modernist literature really reflects upon the ways in which uh, language can or cannot capture the actual experience of the human being at a time of great uncertainty. I really liked the fact that it was um, about more than just um, Shakespeare, um, even though he's the most famous um, of the dramatists of his time. Um, it was really good to explore um, other writers um, of the same period, especially as that's my area of, of specific interest. So this module will expose you to a range of contemporary English poetries um, which don't use traditional form as their organising principle. The critical and creative reading material for each week will expand upon the procedures, techniques and writing strategies. Um, we'll cover subjects such as found text, appropriation poetics and other chance procedures such as cut up, uh, erasure poetry, and we'll look at a range of ulipo writing techniques and exercises, visual poetry, concrete poetry, radical feminist poetry, the avant-garde lyric, radical landscape poetry, sound of performance writing, and writing the body. As the name suggests, the majority of the work, reading and research involved, is based on and around the 21st century. For example, one of the more recent texts that we read was written and published in 2018. Now bear in mind that I was studying this in 2019. The reason that I love this module so much is because it deals with events and situations that have occurred within my lifetime. And as you can imagine, the texts that we read are heavily politicised, although not biased. For example, many of the texts that I had to read dealt with racism, xenophobia, homophobia and transphobia to name a few, all of which are still happening in the present time that we occupy. Before the 1660s, there is no novel, and at the end of the period, the end of the 18th century, we have Jane Austen. So the rise of the novel is one of those literary developments that I think is most significant in this period. And students are encouraged to reflect on this development by reading amatory fiction, so uh, material that is, that is before the novel, but, but heavily informs what the novel becomes. Early novels like Gulliver's Travels, Samuel Richardson's Pamela, later novels like Francis Burney's Evelina, and even the first ever Gothic novel, like Castle of Otranto by Horace Walpole from 1764. It looks at Shakespeare's early career um, and situates his practices as a poet and dramatist within the broader milieu of uh, late 1580s and early 1590s London. It also looks at the other dramatists with whom Shakespeare was working, people like Christopher Marlowe and Thomas Nash and George Peel. So this module is obviously about the ways we've uh, expressed love over the last 500 years and some of the ways that we've felt, imagined or coped with uh, different forms of love in very different times. So it's quite a distinctive module in that we get to compare across eras. So we can look at Shakespeare next to Gertrude Stein, or we can look at John Keats next to Rihanna. Uh, and we do look at a uh, popular song at the end of the module. We examine various different forms that poetry can take beyond the page. So we look at things like spoken word. Uh, we look at things like uh, the intersections between poetry and art and poetry and theatre, um, and poetry and music. We look at different media um, that poetry can engage with, things like film. Um, we look at poetic objects, um, things like artists' books and performance documentation. And we look at the ways in which these forms of poetry um, engage with contemporary issues, um, issues like gentrification, um, gendered labour, and social justice. One of the modules that I teach is called Passport to Oblivion, and its main purpose is to teach you how to write memoir, how to write about yourself, how to write yourself into history. That means 
writing diaries, writing about yourself in any possible way that includes social network writing, small snippets of your experience. And the basic idea behind this is that memory is the point in which space, meaning place, time and self all cut into each other. In the first half of the module, we have a look at what was going on in literature in the far reaches of the British Empire in the 1700s. We'll look at some really fascinating authors like Phyllis Wheatley, the slave poet, or Uncle Eliza Winfield, the uh, Native American novelist. We'll also have a look at Benelong's letter, Benelong being the first Aboriginal man to pen a composition in the English language. In the second half of the module, uh, we zoom out yet again and we have a, a think about what was going on in literature outside the British Empire, beyond Europe. Did the Enlightenment really happen in Europe alone? To do that, we do a long four-week comparison of one of the great English novels of the period, The Female Quixote, and one of the greatest Chinese novels of the period, The Story of the Stone. We'll look at the different ideas of medicine, the different ideas of science, the different ideas of justice and politics that informed writers in Europe and in China, and we'll have a think about how unique European modernity really is. This module begins with Edgar Allan Poe, with his dark Gothic tales from the 19th century about murder and detection. It goes through hard-boiled writing in the early 20th century, talks about the history of race and gender, and takes us right up to some contemporary crime fiction, such as Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. This module will help you to really understand how contemporary crime narratives draw and build on the history of the genre and will give you a chance to explore how it evolved from the past right up to the present. But the best part of the degree for me is the way that you can make your own and make the most of it. Thank you for tuning in and watching this video. I hope it's been helpful in giving you a sense of what your life at Kent could be like. If you have any questions about any of the material we've covered, or if you would want to like to talk a bit more about the specific program to which you have applied, uh, please feel free to get in touch with me. Uh, my email is available on the screen for you now. Um, if you would prefer to talk more in person, I'm also really happy to schedule in video calls with you. So please just get in touch with me and I can make arrangements for that. Um, just to close, I want to kind of let you know that myself and my colleagues, as well as all of our current students, we're all really, really glad that you have applied to study with us. And all of us very much look forward to the opportunity to welcome you to Kent in autumn 2020. Thanks for watching and have a great day.